The voice of nature says, listen, if you don't choose life, you're going to die. You must participate in life. You can't stay lost in the dark woods as the mourning king. When we're lost in tremendous grief, tremendous melancholy, we may reach the nadir. And Jung said, often in a deep, dark place, he often thought that's the place where things begin to change. That when we're up against the choice, will I choose life? Well, we have these uh, wonderful themes. But maybe we can um, take the the story section by section and just uh, work through it a bit. And uh, like my a go-to dream. is like a dream. Exactly. <laughs> my go-to is often to think of it like a dream. Okay. So we start with the king, and he went hunting in this vast forest, and he got lost and couldn't find his way out, which is also the beginning of Dante's Divine Comedy, Mm -hmm. you know, walking through a dark woods, and I took this path instead of that one, and that made all the difference. Yeah. I could not find my way. So what's a forest? Well, it's the wilderness or the wilderness. Um, It's often a symbol for the unconscious. And that's where we often meet witches, isn't it? Witches and enchanted princes, talking animals. Um, All of these are the things you find in the forest. You know whenever somebody goes hunting in the forest and gets lost, the tale is about to begin. The king is often interpreted as the ruling principle in the psyche. Mm -hmm. Many of us, when we do deep, deep work, may find that there is a central value or a value system that really guides the first half of our lives. And often that doesn't work so well as we continue to mature because the first king is often created in infancy or early childhood, and we need something much more sophisticated as we continue to grow. So the king is going hunting, which often is for sport, in a vast forest, and he gets lost. Interesting that he's also hunting alone, which of course would probably never happen. So another way to think of that, in terms of this idea of midlife, is that we will begin to venture beyond our normal scope of curiosity, and we may find ourselves in a depression, a midlife depression, and we can't find our way out. We're listless. We're lost. We don't know where to go, what to do, what the next direction is. And then he finds a kind of anthropomorphic, version of the forest itself. Which in the forest are one? And one of the ways that I could imagine that is the witch is as ruthless as nature is. Because if he remains lost in the forest and remains there, he probably would die, would lose his life. And the witch is speaking to him very much like Nature, red in tooth and claw. So we tend to be frightened by these anthropomorphic Mm -hmm. images of nature, but over and again, they may seem monstrous to our sentimental human Mm -hmm. attitude, but they often are just as black and white and stark as nature, in fact, can be. And that here is this image of the feminine uh, archetypally as a witch in the negative aspect. Uh, That the feminine can be beneficent, just like Mother Nature. It's a beautiful summer day, the flowers are blooming, the sun is warm, and Mother Nature can also be 
as you said, red in tooth and claw of storms and uh, floods and all kinds of other things. So uh, as an archetype, feminine and masculine are opposites. We could say yin and yang, or in alchemy, it's the king and queen, Mm -hmm. uh, sun and moon. And uh, as as archetypal as archetypes, they have a positive and negative aspect. And here, when the king is lost, psychologically lost, confused, doesn't know where he is or what to do, what does he meet? He meets a witch, who says, "You have to marry my daughter." Oh, so way. as the price for his survival, he he has to join with the negative feminine uh, who gives him the creeps mm-hmm. and makes him secretly shudder. S- so we, we have this meeting of opposites right at the outset. Well, I think that if the witch is the personification of nature, and if we think of the, the king, perhaps a, a widower, has fallen into depression, yeah. he's lost, you know, and, and the voice of nature says, listen, if you don't choose life, you're going to die. And, and yeah. nature itself says, I, I will provide this young, uh, this young feminine, I, I will provide a new wife and who is beautiful, and you must participate in life. Yeah, you, you can't stay lost in the dark woods as the morning king, but the ego is not is not on with this. He's not immediately mm-hmm. thrilled about all of this, but he does suddenly think that he wants to live. And when we're lost in tremendous grief, yeah, a tremendous melancholy. We may reach the nadir. Um, and Jung said, often in a deep, dark place, we will begin to have suicidal ideas. And for Jung, he often thought that's the place where things begin to change. That when we're up against the choice, will I choose life? And the spirit of the forest says, Either you're going to choose life or you're going to die. And if you choose life, I'll give you a hand. I mean, I've, I have a beautiful daughter. Um, it's not sentimental. It's not about love. No mm-hmm. one's talking about love here. But nature herself gives an option. And when he finally really faces the fact that he'd prefer to live, he says, okay. I mean, and she's young and beautiful. But you can see that the king's attitude is still ambivalent. Couldn't look at her without feeling creeped out and, and shuddering and, and feeling very ambivalent mm-hmm. about choosing life. But he does have a certain kind of faithfulness in terms of keeping his promises. And so nature writes his instincts. And nature suddenly wakes him up He has a sense of where he is, and nature leads him out of the depression, out of the forest, Mm -hmm. with this this new lease on life. But as you said, Deb, there's a lot of ambivalence, and this isn't a meek feminine. She's she also has magic powers that can be Mm -hmm. um, dangerous and potent. Right. So this is a meeting of opposites Mm -hmm. uh, that is laid out right at the beginning of the tale. And then what happens next? Well, um, our our good king, uh, he gets it that his wife is uh, uh, dangerous Mm -hmm. and would uh, intend to uh, hurt his children. So back to the forest. So here's the forest in a different iteration this time. Um, There's a castle in the middle of the forest, very well concealed. A wise woman, and we see this uh, theme in other tales, especially the the tale of Theseus and Ariadne, 
A wise woman gives him a ball of yarn that magically um, unwinds itself so that he can uh, find his way into this well-concealed castle in the forest. So, you know, here's, here's a strategy. And uh, don't we all do this of like, okay, um, then let me sequester what is most precious to me in a place where only I have access. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a good uh, ego-oriented effort at, at protection. Uh, this is the place in the unconscious, in the forest, that is a castle. So there is something has been uh, built and created um, out of consciousness in the middle of the forest. And there's a way to get there. So this seems like a good idea. Well, Except, of course, we know it's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs>